My name is Timur and I'm with Yandex, uh, Russia's leading search provider, uh, which is not relevant here and uh, I'll be talking about different things. Uh, basically I'll be talking about uh, uh, an open source initiative that our company supports, it's called uh, One Platform Foundation. And the basic idea behind it is to uh, ease and facilitate publishing and maintaining applications in multiple Android app stores. Um, I was I was uh, talking to people at DroidCon for for t two days previous days, and I was surprised uh, that people were aware of alternative app stores before. B b b in other countries, uh, they weren't actually aware. They would say like, uh, "Okay, there's Google Play. Why would we do something else?" Um, so, Germany respect <laughs> people. People know stuff around. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about app stores anyway because I've prepared these slides. Uh, so there are like uh, more than 50 different application stores available on Android and I think there are like 10 to 15 which worth uh, publishing to. Um, here you see some of them and I see and I think some of you some of these stores you might know. Uh, some of them uh, you might publish to. Uh, by the way, uh, does anyone ever publish to an alternative app store? Uh, okay, since I can basically hear you, what would that be? What what application store did you publish to? Beyond Google Play. Uh, I tried, but actually two years ago I tried Destiny. So it's like the uh, and app store. Uh, even if, even all these Chinese app stores. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, great. And you? Everyone. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Really? So you have it even even in the Yandex store? I think it's quite new. <laughs> so anyone else maybe published to an app store that's it's uh, it's, it's not on the screen because it's just the main that I, ju I dropped them there. Oh, Thibaut, where did you where did you post your app? <laughs> oh, the the guy knows something about alternative app stores. Um, okay, so people know something about app stores. So, so they're. So anyway, why, why should I think about it? Why should I publish the alternative app stores? So the first thing is you don't want to miss uh, the people uh, who are out there with devices without Google Play. And there are plenty of them. I'll, I'll show the, the slide later. Uh, the next thing is like it's a better discoverability for your app. Uh, an easy example, if you're a uh, small studio or an indie developer and you have your application posted uh, in Google Play, let's say in, uh, in a couple of weeks uh, it goes to the, down, uh, to the down of the list. I mean, it's, it's not visible to users anymore. It's not exposed. Uh, unlikely in, in small stores, uh, you still have a better chance of, 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 of being at top even after two or three weeks because there are lesser apps. So uh, this is the second thing. Uh, uh, another important thing uh, f how I see is a larger geographical spread because there are um, uh, countries where uh, which has a local application store which are uh, well not a significant maybe maybe not as significantly big as Google Play but which are worth checking out. Oh, I, I press something something different. I'm sorry. So. Uh, I'd like to, to, to back up the, this with some data, but it's really hard uh, to find you know, a solid number saying like, please, this is the uh, information from some agencies. But there's definitely millions of devices worldwide that are shipped uh, without Google Play. Uh, just, just believe that number. It's, it's true. Um, uh, I'll, I'll just give you a couple of data facts uh, what I have. So Amazon, these guys claim that they have 22% of the Amer American uh, tablet market. Uh, it was posted in their official press release. I couldn't confirm it, so I just uh, check it myself. So worldwide, they have 11.5%. So 11.5% um, uh, of all tablets shipped worldwide are Amazon, and they don't have Google Play, period. Well, another thing, like you mentioned, uh, slide me. These guys uh, have like 20 million uh, 20 million devices, uh, d 20 million devices uh, running uh, with their store exclusively. There is no Google Play as well. So if you don't post there, you miss this 20 million devices with you know actual people. Mm, 
uh, yesterday um, I caught up with uh, Zasha, a great guy. I, I don't remember his last name, but I think he's he's uh, known in Germany. He's a blogger who lives in Taiwan, and we were talking about the uh, application store in Asia and. Uh, I, I knew this fact before, but he just confirmed it uh, to me yesterday uh, about Korea. So there is this application sto store called T Store, which is um, which is comparable to Google in the sizes in Korea. So they have like 18 and a half million users. They have uh, just over one billion application downloads, and uh, people in Korea actually pay money. So uh, if you go to Korea and you miss them, you miss a lot. So. T-Mobile is, uh, I'm sorry, uh, T-Store is definitely a store to post to if you're going to uh, localize your app in Korea and uh, sell it there. Another interesting thing is uh, uh, local payments. Uh, I don't know how, how, it's, how it's in Germany, but in Russia where I come from, uh, people are not comfortable with paying, uh, paying with credit card. I mean, I had an example with my brother like a week ago. He said, like, I really like this app. How do I buy it? I said, well, your credit card just put in the information. He said, um, no, I don't want to do that. No, thank you. Uh, so <clears throat> an example is Yandex Store in Russia. What they did is they did a direct carrier billing with all Russian operators. So it's much easier for users to buy content uh, of Yandex Store. Google is also doing try, trying to start it, but they're, I, I think they only, only have one like smaller operator. So Yandex Store may be choice for the Russian users to buy software. Um, <clears throat> another interesting case uh, about China, it's a funny slide how, how things stand uh, in the West uh, and uh, how things stand in China. Uh, so in China you have like uh, 30 to 40 to 50 maybe different application stores. Google Play is literally non-existent there. Uh, maybe because of their uh, problem with Chinese government, I don't know, but anyway. There are like five to ten applications stored the same size, um, and one of the biggest uh, Chinese mobile stores called uh, Mobile Market, with a good name for an application store. Uh, they claim to have one uh, 149 million users with like almost two billion application downloads, and which makes this the biggest Chinese uh, application market. Um, I'm, not, I'm not telling you that you should go and publish to Chinese application store right away. What I'm saying is. Um, that this market in five years might change dramatically. And if you think about like growing your revenues in there, maybe it's worth uh, looking in that direction and maybe it's worth uh, localizing your app and uh, at least start experimenting in that direction. Um, so it's essential thing, right? You convinced us we, can, we should publish to different app stores to try, right? But there are a couple of problems we have. Um, the first thing is it's really time consuming to at least publish to different application stores. The second, uh, if you have in-app billing, um, it, it's also time consuming. I mean, there are different APIs. You have time, you need time to spend your time to upload there. So uh, one platform foundation, an open source initiative, is about uh, solving these problems. Uh, so the first project under this initiative is called AppDF, uh, Application Description Format, or Application Description File. Um, it's a format like to, to ease your life. I'm going to explain it uh, a couple of slides later how it works. Uh, so how th things st stand today when you uh, publish to different app stores. So you have your APK, you have the screenshots, uh, you have the, the description, which is long description, short description, change logs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And different application stores have uh, uh, different requirements maybe for promotional graphics. And you have to do it in each application store. So it would uh, look something like this. Um, I, I forgot to add that uh, each APK plus screens but metadata might be different. Because uh, like I said, they have different requirements for something. So uh, if you post to a significant amount of stores, it might easily take you up to one day to upload your app in every store, which is ridiculous to me. Um, so the basic idea be behind this application description file format uh, is we take an application, 
we take a uh, meta description uh, of, 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 the, of the application. We take resources like icons, promo images, and screenshots, and package it in one single file with the AppDF, uh, uh, AppDF, how do you call it? AppDF, whatever, AppDF format. Uh, and then you could publish this application file to every app store, I'm sorry, that supports it. Um, I have a little kind of demo. I, don't, I wouldn't call it a demo, it's a developer conference. I don't call XML a code, but anyway, um, I think you could see it. So it's basically um, in the first version of uh, uh, application description file specification. Uh, I'll briefly just run through it, what we have here. So uh, for each application, you have uh, categories, uh, you have the description, and description description is a, it, it doesn't match to, it doesn't map to a description uh, uh, in a form of uh, de de developer console. De description is a little bit different here, so uh, there's, there are te text description, like t uh, title, then keywords, uh, short description, full description, uh, features, uh, change log, privacy policy, et cetera, et cetera. Then the next section under it, it's the images. Which, uh, explain, uh, which explains everything that uh, I told about uh, earlier. So the application icon, small and large promos, screenshot, et cetera, et cetera. Then the videos. Uh, and this section is uh, uh, description localization, which has uh, this uh, argument with language, obviously Russian. So what you can do is you can uh, your localized uh, content within uh, the section. Um, the next thing is the content description, which includes uh, rating, content, uh, rating certificates, content descriptors, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, let's skip this. The next important thing is the price you want to charge for your application. It's whether free or you want to uh, charge something for it. That the base price in USD. Then you have the local prices, let's say Germany, France, Russia, et cetera, et cetera. Then uh, an important thing is the APK files. You can have more than one because you know that in some stores you can have multiple APKs. Um, so these are optional. An important thing is the content here is, is this section you cannot skip. It's basically um, uh, an agreement between you and the store, uh, which you have to say yes for all the stores. I mean, you have to say that yes, I agree to uh, whatever agreements you have between you and the store. Um, and there is a section, a store-specific section, which is optional. Uh, it just explains, uh, as understood from the name, some store-specifics uh, and store-specific information. Um, so what you do is you just describe everything in this file. Um, it basically uh, covers all the stores that we, uh, as of today, now managed to investigate. It's close to 10, and we are continuing to do. Uh, we continue to do this. Um, if you're not comfortable with uh, doing this, you could use a. AppDF uh, editor, so it's it's a, a it's a very funny web app that can do everything I've just shown you in a uh, in a fancy way. I don't know if you see it. Yeah, so uh, everything I just uh, shown I've just shown you can be done using this uh, well uh, a more friendlier interface. It's a long th thing to fill in. We're also working. Um, uh, we also want to do the following. We want to uh, this AppDF editor be able to uh, gather data by package name from Google Play. So most of the data will be filled in for you. Uh, I mean, this is the next s steps for this. So after you fill in everything, you just uh, press this build AppDF file uh, button, and uh, as an output, you have the uh, AppDF file that you can upload to an uh, application store that support it. Um, Cosmos. Uh, so this is the diagram basically explaining how it works. The developer gives the application description to AppDF editor. AppDF editor generates the file for you, and this single file can go to whatever app store that supports it. Okay, problem number one. Approach, solution, yeah, we're going to have it. Well, problem number two is the in-app billing. 
Uh, and what we have, what, what problems do we have with in-app with in -app billing? The, the first uh, and most important thing is um, in-app billing is not part of um, Android. In-app billing, uh, well, each of the application stores have their own APIs. So there's no something like open APIs. I mean, different stores, different APIs. The more stores there are, the more APIs you have to implement. Sucks. So this is basically the picture of uh, how it works today. Please implement the Google uh, API. Please implement the Amazon. Please imp implement the Samsung API to store. Uh, as of today, it was five, yeah, five. Because Nuke, uh, they've announced that they are going to have an app billing as well a couple of days ago. So there's, there are not, there's now five, five in app billings. So uh, what we want to do, this is the this is the idea behind it. Uh, we want to wrap uh, all existing in app billing APIs in one single library. This is step A. Step B. We want to expose a single open in-app billing API for developers that will just call through to whatever in-app billing that you know, any store will provide. And we want, it's a hard thing to do of course, but we want that. We want develop, uh, more stores uh, to support this uh, open in-app billing API when we roll it out. Uh, and we want more developers to do it uh, using open in-app uh, billing API. So uh, the idea is I write it once and then I don't care. I just don't, don't want to do it like five or six times, just once and I don't care. Um, so it's an open source initiative like I said and uh, it's started recently so we already have some progress. Uh, so in AppDF description file stuff uh, we have now rolled out specification uh, version 1.0. Uh, it's uh, up and running and one one pf.org website. I'll show the link later, as well as uh, in the GitHub. We also have the editor that I've just shown you. Uh, we have plans, and there is a roadmap for uh, updating it. Like I said, an important thing is you know pulling data from from Google Store for you not to type extra stuff. stuff. Uh, we already have the libraries in Python, Java, and PHP for uh, stores to uh, support AppDF on their side. That's basically another um, huge work for us. It's like working with stores, convincing them that uh, they really need it. Uh, I mean, small stores uh, are easier to deal with. Bigger stores are obviously harder. Um, with in-app billing, it's just starting. So what we have is we have a game uh, that implements or for it's, it's now five, but we didn't have enough time for the fifth. Uh, for billing, uh, in-app billing APIs, just for you guys to see how it works. So the game is available in GitHub as well, yeah. under project. Um, so who, who are we looking for? So this is an uh, uh, open source project. So we're looking for Android developers who would like to join, who are interested in this. And uh, there are many, <laughs> like I see. So um, what I want from you guys. Please go and try this AppDF stuff because uh, we, you guys are smart. We want your expertise, we want your feedback, uh, we want to know whether it's worth doing or not from your side. Um, then give us a feedback, email me. Um, I'm available here. I'll give, I'll give my business cards. Um, the second thing, please check out the uh, Open and App Billing uh, project in, on GitHub. Uh, there are some proposals. Please re read through them, uh, share your ideas, uh, share your critics. What do you think about it? If you like it, please contribute. Um, well, in the end, just uh, enjoy a less painful alternative app store experience. Uh, this is the link to uh, uh, one pm.org foundation website. So if you guys have any questions, I'll answer them with pleasure. Thank you very much.